Hey everyone, this is Garrett from GS Lighting Solutions and welcome to my very first live stream where I'm just going to show you how I set up my new lighting rig. So just to give you a basic understanding of what I have here, um, what I have starting over here is I have four Technolux Ultralux 7s all the way, one, two, three, four. I have two Technolux LED strobe 330s which are right here and right there. I have two um, Showtuck Phantom 75 watt LED spots. I have a fog machine or a hazer and I'm running everything off of my iPad which I'm using Air DMX program by Airguys. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I set up a system and how I go ahead and program. So let's go ahead and begin. So what I'm gonna start out doing is I'm gonna make sure everything has power. So I'm gonna go through each light and I'm gonna just plug them in and provide power to each one. So let's go. So I have already set up some of the power so that just makes it a little easier. So I'm just gonna start getting these things set up. So hopefully it won't get too loud. You'll be able to hear it just fine. Alright, so I got both my spots, so they're going through their little warm-up. Now I'm going to go ahead and put power to all my lights up on my trussing. So, for all my lights that I have set up up here, they're using a um, twist lock uh, power con cable. So that is a very stable cable it locks into the back just like just like you see there and it provides a very sturdy constant power source so I'll go ahead and go over here so I'm gonna plug each one in they're all LED so they're using less power than a standard cable or than a standard uh, light fixture Now I'm not going to plug anything in, or um, let me rephrase that. I'm not going to actually like do any cabling up here, just because right now I'm just programming and just setting up the lights. Last one on this side, and I'll go to the one over here. So, for those of you who don't know, um, I have my own lighting consulting and install business. Um, I'm up in the Seattle, Washington area. So, what I'm doing right now is I'm actually working on getting an event lighting service started so that I can provide services um, to anybody who needs it, whether it be weddings or or graduation parties or any kind of celebration. Um, I want to be able to provide a, a service for that. So that's kind of what this uh, lighting system is for. That's why you're here. If you decide to join me and see what's going on. So it might look a little bit messy, but it'll probably be pretty cool once I get everything in and set up and running. Alright. Almost done getting power. As you can see, this one is set up on a demo mode. That's why it's uh, doing its own thing at the moment. Let me just get this set. Uh, 
There we go. Don't want to keep you blinded. All right. Last light here. This plugged in. All right. I'm going to plug in my Air DMX. And then we'll get started with uh, plugging the, uh, the data cables to each light. So, as you can tell, this is the uh, Air DMX box. And what this does is it creates a Wi Fi signal that uh, goes to the lights and allows me to use my iPad um, to control each of the lights to create the shows and stuff that I do. Alright, I'm going to plug the first uh, data cable in to my lights. Get some more cables. Actually, let's get the longer ones for the for my spots. So, if there is anyone online watching this, um, sorry, I don't have an option to be able to see any comments or uh, chat that you might have. Um, just trying to. Trying this out, seeing if this works. All right. I'll move on to the next one. So if you don't know kind of what I'm doing, I am setting up what's called a DMX daisy chain. And what makes these lights really cool is that you can actually plug in multiple lights into a single DMX line. Um, so you don't have to run a cable for each one out of a, a central source. Um, that's the beauty of DMX. It allows you to, uh, to take these lights, connect them all together down a line, and then um, the data being sent from the controller just can just go from light to light to light to light to light. To light almost instantaneously. All right, we'll go to another. There we go. There's some of these shorter cables. That'll uh, keep it from, cables from getting all bunched up up in here. All right. There we go. Put it into there. So once I'm done with this section of plugging in all the cables, then I'm going to go through each individual light and address them. So with any lighting system, um, there's a, each light gets a special address, which is a, uh, a number between 1 and uh, 512. And what that allows me to do is to de designate each light into uh, what the board reads. So the board knows that a, a light that's on channel 34, per se, will get red or green or whatever you're, you're doing. So I'm just gonna keep going, put some more stuff in. There. Keep them kinda out of the way. Just plug them in here. There we go. And I'm getting down to the almost to the end. Thank you for being patient with this part. I will do my best to explain the process as I go along if that is helpful to you or anybody else. So, this stuff is just the most tedious portion, which is just <laughs> setting up the lights, um, programming, and doing all that stuff, that's the fun stuff. But 
kind of have to go and do the not so fun stuff before you can get there. All right, almost done. A couple more cables. And then we'll be good to go. So feel free, if you uh, are watching this video, to uh, leave a comment on the video once it's up and posted. Um, that'll allow me to answer any questions you might have um, after this broadcast is over. Alright. Last cable, and then I will explain to you what a DMX Terminator is. So, now that I have all of my lights plugged in, um, from starting from the DMX box, which is my Air DMX box, all the way through my two moving headlights, and through my four park hands and two strobe lights, I'm at the very end. Now, some people think that you can just leave it as is, but I actually am of the school of thought that you need to terminate your data line. And what I have right here, this little blue connector, is a DMX data line, or data terminator. And what a data terminator does is it takes the signal that is being sent and stops it. This allows for the signal not to get washed and get, get dirty and it kind of causes interferences. So this is um, the best way to keep the signal clean and to lessen the amount of malfunctions you might have on your lights. So I'm just plug that into the last one. Alright. Yeah. Okay. So now that we're done with that, now I'm gonna go ahead and go into my Air DMX mode. Alright, so now I'm going to go on my Air DMX. I have it already programmed where all the addresses are going to be on my uh, Air DMX. This should lessen the amount of time I have to sit behind each light programming them. Alright, just making sure everything's connected. So, Air DMX is really cool. Everything runs off the iPad. And this allows you to get some pretty cool looks, and you can be mobile. So you can be anywhere in your venue. Um, I've even been in another room and controlled the lights. So this is a very handy program. I really love it. Um, and if you have any questions about this product, just send me an email or, uh, or leave a comment in the uh, video below. All right, so I'm going to go into my fixture patch, my fixture setup. So as you can see right here, you, know, you might not be able to see it's how far away it is. I have all my lights set out right here and each one has an address. So I can go in and look at each individual address and then just go with the corresponding light and put that light onto that address. So let's go. So first one is my Let's see, where is it? There's my first uh, phantom, which that is going to be number 21, number, the first channel, channel 1. Let's hit enter. Second one will be channel 15. So. With some lights that are older technology, um, they do have what's called dip switches. It's a little more complicated, but it does basically the same thing. Um, it tells the address um, to the controller, so that when the controller is sending the signal out, it's pretty simple. All right, so now we're going to move on to our 
Ultra Lux 7s, which are these little guys right here. We're going to start with this one. Let's see. The first one is going to be number 29. See where my strobes are at. Sixty-nine. All right. It's going to be thirty-nine. So the way, the way I like to, pr um, to set up my lights is I like to set them up in groups instead of down like a linear line. So my first two lights that I use are my spot lights. My next set of lights I use are my washes. My third set of lights are my strobe lights so that it's very easy and everything's grouped together, which makes it a lot quicker doing programming. So we're going to go down to this light, a, let's see here, this one would be 49, Forty, 40, 49, alright, two more lights and I'm done. Okay, so, I'm going to go to this light. This would be my other LED strobe, which would be 72. Okay, that one's good. And last but not least, my very last uh, Ultralux 7. Which would be 59. 59. Alright. So, now I have, I have set up all my lights. I have powered all my lights and now I have addressed or set up all my lights. So now that I have everything programmed, I'm going to go ahead and turn on my smoke machine so that I have the ability to start adding some smoke in the room which will help um, just get everything looking nice. Alright, let's uh, get this going. So, the smoke machine I am using is also a, a haze machine that is made from Technolux. Um, I am a dealer for Technolux, so I really like to get a hold of the products that I sell so that I can show people how it works, and I'm really happy with all the products I have. So, right now, I'm warming up the hazer, getting that ready. And the cool thing that I like about this hazer is that not only does it have the controller here, but it has a DMX in and out right here as well. So I can plug this into my lighting setup and I don't have to worry about having to be somewhere pushing a button to create fog. So, all right, let's start uh, seeing if all the lights work, all right? If you're still watching, um, thank you so much for continuing to watch. You know, this is my first time doing this. So I'm going to kind of just reset up a few things because I'll be sitting over here in the corner. So you probably won't be able to see me too much. I might try and pop my head out a bit when I'm trying to talk. Um, but what I'm going to do is kind of let the lights speak for themselves. And I'll probably try and get some music going as well. So let's, let's keep going. So first off, I'm going to go ahead and turn on. I'm going to go ahead and turn on my uh, my spotlights, my moving spotlights, and 
uh, get those going. All right, got my first light moving. I'm going to set this right up here. So, as you can see, a moving spot is a really kind of a cool light. What this allows you to do is you can create moving, moving light effects, but also what is really cool about this light is that any kind of thing you're wanting to do, if there's like a you know, um, an item you want to uh, highlight or anything like that, what this allows you to do is actually go and highlight that item. You can put a spotlight, you can put different kind of colors on that, on that item. And then you can also put a gobo. I'm going to focus this so you can kind of... There we go. You can kind of see the gobo has a whole bunch of different looks and I can also do different kinds of effects so I can spin it or I can add a prism that's a really cool I really like that effect so now I got that working let's go ahead and throw some color on there and I can also do what's called split colors so what I really like about that is you can get kind of two-tone multi looks on your uh, lights. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and move on to my next light. Make sure I got that working. Yep, there it goes. Now I have full control over that one. So I'm just gonna kind of put this in the background so that you can actually see the light. All right, move that down just a bit, and there we go. Now get it kind of a little bit of a different look and as you can see it looks kind of odd right now just because the uh, the light does not completely focus so when I throw that focus in there it goes now it's focusing more on the light itself I'll pull that down just a bit alright both of those are working so now I'm gonna move on to my So, i got my first parkan working, and as you notice, I can mix the colors anything I want. And the reason I really like having a truss set up for this is um, I can literally set these lights wherever I want. So, right now, I'm just going to add a little bit of smoke in the room so that we can uh, get some cool uh, effects going. Trying to get somewhere now. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and just start pointing some of these lights in a few places, just so that I, you can kind of see it a little better. All right. All right. Well, thank you to whoever is uh, watching right now, and really appreciate that. So, anyways, I am gonna move on to other. I have a whole bunch. The the cool thing I like about these Ultralux Sevens is I have red, green, blue, white, amber, and UV color mixing abilities, which are really kind of a cool thing to have. Because uh, uh, that UV can add some really cool deep effects and color saturations. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to our next light. Get some uh, get some color stuff going. Get 
some uh, nice music going that uh, hopefully The thing I like about having a, a mobile setup like this is that I can literally, any kind of room that I need to set it up, I can set it up and I can change it to that room to best fix it, to best work with that room. All right, so, got that one going. Let's move on to our next light. Let's see here, there we go. setup going like this um, I'm really not going to be having cables hanging around and everything is going to be nicely put up and everything but just because of the fact that I'm just initially setting all this stuff up it's kind of why it's a little bit of a mess all right on to the last light here turn this one up I think that's uh Good on the smoke there. Probably just go ahead and turn that the machine off on me. Oh, try and get that from a bit. So, this is basically the setup. It is very simple, but I really like simple. I can do a lot with these uh, par cans. I can do a lot with the uh, spotlights and all that. So now I'm gonna go ahead and show you my uh, strobe lights. i move on to the next one. Get these going. I'll just turn this on at, without the shutter. What I really like with these strobe lights is that there's 10 individual rings, as you can see, on each one. And what that does is it allows you to get some really kind of cool patterns. I'm just kind of going through some of the patterns. And as you can see, it is really, really right. So for, I can just do kind of any kind of or anything that I really want and I can do some pretty random stuff that will help liven up the mood for whatever song you're playing so let's go ahead and get the next one going As you can see, I have two strobes going. I have uh, four park hands and I have two spotlights going. It's kind of a, a simple setup, but uh, I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. So now that everything's working, we'll go ahead and um, just kind of get some stuff going, create a couple of looks. And uh, at the end of the video. Let's see. Oh. Alright, 
So I basically went in and reset all my lights so that they're all off. And I'm gonna gonna go ahead and go through the, the process that I go the the process that I do to program lights. So one of the cool functions that I like about this is that I don't have to individually pull each light up like I just did. What I'm actually going to do is pull them up in by groups. So I'm going to go ahead and pull my Ultralux 7s. I'm just going to pull those up. And there we go. That gives me the option I can change the colors to anything I, I need. So I'm going to do, yeah, why not? Do a green. So now that I'm done there, I'll go ahead and pull up my Showtech spotlights. Okay. Now, as you can notice, they're all kind of just pointing at the ground, but I can actually just take that. Just point it, there we go. And I can go in and look at the, get my focus just like I want it. Let's see. Let's do that look right there. My prism. Okay, now, back to my grouping. Add some color. Let's do a nice contrasting color there. Yellow, there we go. So, now I have just created my very first look. So, what I'm going to do is... Let's go and edit. There we go. I'm going to start this over again. Get our... He's upset. Then put them in there. Let's get a nice look going. There we go. Get these going again. My, uh, and there we go. Back into our look that we were looking for. So what I'm gonna do my fade ins done. ran this right off of my uh, my cue. So as you can see, I have it in a fade in time right now. About three seconds and then I have an instant off. Alright, I'm going to turn that off. And then I'll go in get my second channel going and I'll do same fade time but this time I'm going to change it to all blue let's see if I can get the good and, uh, a little bit of a lighter blue one of my show techs. Get those going. Now I can also individually change them so I don't have to have them all doing the exact same thing. 
lines. I'm just gonna change this light over. What goes good with blue? Yeah, that works. Alright, let's see. Find a good. There we go. Let's do this look. Okay. Global rotating here. I think I'll leave it at that. So, now that I have that look done, the second hit done. So, now that I have two cues, there you go. So, and this only, I'm just building cues right now. I'm not actually building a program. So, now I'm gonna show you what I do to build a program. All right. Edit step. Let's get this stuff going. that over there, that up there, okay, let's get my focus in, okay, I'm going to focus in on my other light, and there we go, there we go, find a nice look for that one. So what I like about lighting is that I can get very creative. So I don't have to change anything. Um, I can create any kind of look that I want. So what I'm going to do is create some moving and color changing looks into a, uh, a program. So let's go ahead and get some... Uh, some nice color going on. So red, green, blue. Last one I'm going to do white. All right, three different colors, all different looks and colors, and one step is done. Let's create another step and edit the step. So now what I can do. I can create, I can move that over here. Well, I can do whatever I want, basically. But create that there. Over here, create, put that here. We'll change the color of that one. Change the color of that one. And then so the one thing that with lighting is that it takes time. So it's not one of those things you can just throw throw some looks on there and call it good. You have to kind of spend some time going into different lights and programming each look. All right. So what I'm doing, I'm just going through each individual step so that when you play the whole look together, you get a different uh, look every time it creates a, a, a show. Alright, let's get move this out just a bit.
Another color. There you go, that's a good color. And I'm gonna do white on that one. Blue on that one. Red on that one. Do a little bit light blue there. Alright. So I'm gonna do another step with that setup. Edit that step. And basically what I'm doing is I am copying and pasting each look. And that's why it is coming back up to what I previously did. So that, that allows me to go in and adjust each look to how I want it. I know different programs do it different ways. Some programs are very easy in how they allow you to do it, and others are a little more complicated. Um, this one's not too bad, in my opinion. Right there. Change the color to, there you go. Let's get a nice UV. Color going in there. Another color. There you go. Now I have four different steps. I'm going to do a Second fade, whole time, two seconds. All right, so now I have a program set. Let's see how it goes. So I set all the fade times the same, all of the transitions the same, but I can go in and I can set up individually how I want it to look. So I can also create a, a slower fade time. So I'll go ahead and take that off, edit this. Do fade time of one and a half seconds. So as you can see, each individual light fades with the one and a half seconds to the next to the next cue. So now that I have all that going, I'm going to turn that off. And I'll get a yes edit edit channel. Okay. And reset everything. And off reset. Off reset. Now I'm going to do a cue for my strobe lights. So I'm going to pull my strobe lights up. Dimmer. As you can see, I can go really, really fast on my strobes, or I can slow them down to it. Kind of a, some kind of pattern. What I like to do is I like to offset my strobe lights. 
so that I don't have one specific look that is on that. Sorry, I'm playing around a few settings just so that I can get this going. Alright. There we go. So what I created is basically a place where I can put my strobe lights into any queue. Sure, I have this correct. Ah. All right, there you go. So now I can sit here and go through all my different cues. And then there's a part that I like in the song coming up. Add some, add some strobing in there. And I can go ahead and just change it up. Alright. I'm going to do a little bit of a different fade time. On this. So just by changing a fade time on my lights, I can take the same look, the same effects, and cause it to make look a little more, a little quicker. And I'm gonna make my, my hold time one second. All right. There we go. Anyways, that is anyways that is my my setup and uh, just a little bit of how I program. Thank you guys for watching, and uh, if you haven't liked and subscribed to my channel, please do that. Also, if you have any comments or anything you'd like to see me do um, in another video on how to program lights or anything like that, make sure to go ahead and leave that in the comments, and I will get back to you. See you guys in the next video.